On this episode of Game All Cards Kickoff, we're going to break down the AFC Conference. So your favorite team in the conference is going to break down each ranking. It's going down as always. Game Ball College Kickoff starts right now. Let's get into it. What's happening, everyone? Welcome to Game Ball College Kickoff, where the football season, of course, never ends. I'm your boy, Marcus Young, Jimmy Jenkins. I'm Michael Riley. And I'm Luke Parker. Now, today we're going to break down the ACC Conference, starting with the ACC Coastal Division, and we're going to break down the rankings from number seven down to number one. Mike, you got to start with you first. You have North Carolina ranked number seven um, in this division. Uh, in 2017, they finished with a record of three and nine. Um, I would imagine that's part of the reason why you have them ranked at the bottom of the conference. Yeah, due to that, and also they was plagued with injuries, and it's not their fault and all that. And, and some of the games that they was in, they should have won, but lost at the last second of the fourth quarter because sometime in the second half, towards the end of the third quarter, North Carolina was in a close game until about the fourth quarter where teams scored double-digit touchdowns on them. And they pretty much gave up. So if they can find a way to stay healthy and keep everybody upright and play four quarters of football, then they will win these games and possibly be into the bowl game. But this season, I see their head coach kind of on the hot seat. But the injuries play a major part of it. This is a make or break year for them. So I'm starting off with them at number seven. If they could do some damage, if they could start winning games, then my ranking would be higher. So we'll have to see and find out for North Carolina. For right now, I got number seven. Uh, moving on to you, Luke. Um, you actually have their famous rival, the Duke Blue Devils. You actually have them ranked at seven. Um, in 2017, the Duke Blue Devils finished with a record of seven and six. Why do you have them at the bottom of the bank? Well, mainly because, of, yeah, as far as the coastal division goes, Duke is the hardest team to recruit. Uh, what David Cutcliffe has been able to do there is uh, make that quite comparable to what Bill Snyder's done at K-State, but it's not. He's not that far off. He really isn't. He, he's done an exceptional job there. Uh, maybe I'm doing Duke a favor putting him in the division there. Um, but, but again, it's just a private university, less than 9,000 attendants there, big-time basketball school, as is Virginia, as is North Carolina, the neighbors there. But uh, and again, I just, I mean, I don't know that they had the, the – Depth to sustain the uh, somewhat recent success that they had. Well, um, a pretty um, outstanding case for both teams. Um, we're going to move to number six. Um, a difference there as well, Mike, moving back to you. You have the Pittsburgh Panthers at number six. Uh, they finished at five and seven back in 2017. Why do you have them at six? Well, here's the thing about Pittsburgh. Their defense kept them most of the games and their offense was not producing as much as the defense were. And Pittsburgh did get an upset win their season finale against Miami, and they did have their little 
version of the turnover chain out of cardboard, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. if, <laughs> so if uh, if they had an offense that was efficient and consistent, they could have found themselves in a bowl game. But they didn't. They finished off with a reasonable, decent record, five and seven from the last season. But like I was saying, their defense kept them most of the games. But if they would at least won two more games or one, they would have been bowl eligible and they would have been more recognized as a football program. I mean, Pittsburgh always had a good football program, but in miss, miss, recent memory, excuse me, they've been hit and miss, but they're trying to get back to the good glory day. So Pittsburgh got to find their way offensively. Defensively is there. If they can find their way offensively, then they could be able to surprise people in this division. Speaking of um, returning to the glory days, how far off do you think Pittsburgh actually is of going back to the top of the A? Uh, I'll ABC? say about half a year to a full year. Pittsburgh Panthers right now, Mike has them ranked sixth. Luke is on seven. You, you have Virginia um, at number six on your list. Um, last year, they finished with a record of six and seven back in 2017. Six on Luke's list. Um, we're going to jump to the five slot. Um, Mike, we'll start with you. Um, you have Georgia Tech ranked at number five. They finished at five and six back in 2000. Why do you have them at five? Well, the reason why I have them at five is because they was in some games they, they should have won. For instance, the season over against Tennessee, they had them on their heels until Tennessee came back, scored a late touchdown an extra point to force overtime. And what overtime was said and done, Georgia Tech lost gas and they was on their heels and they couldn't fish out on defense. And offensively, they didn't make enough plays. Georgia Tech offense is that triple option and other option plays as well as that old school hard nose running football. But you start to see more teams on the defense stopping that triple option, if they were like a traditional offense, I could see them winning more games than they won last season, but their coaches sticking to their guns, running that triple option. I mean, it works at certain cases, but when you get to the crunch time games and you need a pass play here and there instead of like 30, 15, a running play, this and this and that, every now and then they do that triple option pass, but if you want to be successful, in this conference, you have to have a traditional offense. I mean, once upon a time, there was getting a lot of wins in that offense, but in recent years, teams have started to recruit better on defense for those type of offenses. So if they would go back to the traditional offense, then they will have some success and win more games. That's my opinion. Mike has Georgia Tech at five going into the ACC Coastal. Now, this is an interesting one for me, Luke, uh, going to you now. Uh, Mike had North Carolina dead last in the ACC Coastal. You actually have them ranked two slots higher at number five. Uh, once again, three and five in 2017. Why do you have them ranked a little bit higher? You know, I mean, they had to adjust to the loss of Mr. Trubisky as the second overall pick of the draft in a very few years before. Brought up some injuries. They uh, dropped a week one game at home to Cal. Uh, when they lost that Cal game, I didn't think it was a trouble. I actually thought Cal. 
scored three times over there. They, uh, they actually, I believe, played week one at California this year. Uh, I think they can win that game. Not a conference game, but if they can go to Cal, return the favor, win 3,000 miles from home, and just get up to that one of those start, I think what it can do for them at the conference, you know, when the conference season rolls around. And, uh, I mean, Carolina, you know, uh, I got Duke at seven, Virginia at six, you know, and Carolina at five. But those three schools, you can't tell me that North Carolina's not the easy for the three to recruit to. They've got talent. They're not going to go three and nine two years in a row. They won't. I mean, me being fond of Carolina Blue, you know, of course I'm a Jayhawk fan, but I love my Tar Heels too, so I would hope that they don't finish dead last, but um, my man Luke here is down on ranked at five. Uh, we're going to jump to the fourth spot, and we're going to talk about, um, you actually have them ranked higher. Um, Luke has Virginia actually ranked at number six. You actually have them at four. Uh, once again, the Cavaliers were six and seven in 2017. Why do you have them ranked a little higher? Well, they got off to a good hot start. Their defense was playing well. Their offense was playing well. I was a big fan of their quarterback who graduated this year, and he was making plays and all that until they ran to a brick wall playing in Miami. When Miami was playing against Virginia, they blew them off the wall in the second half. The first half, they had Miami on their heels until the second half. I don't know what happened, what type of adjustments that they made. They lost. They got their brakes beaten off of in the second half. They was up by 16 in Miami at the Orange Bowl. But the second half, Miami just blew them off the water. And they had a critical pick six that they lost by. And when that pick six happened, Virginia never recovered from that. And they had some losses here and there. It's just that they got to get more efficient on the offensive side. And who's going to be the quarterback in that Virginia offense, we don't know. And most of their players is coming back on defense, I'm assuming. So if Virginia gets a good quarterback play and knows how to, excuse me, not knows, but learns how to finish games in the fourth quarter, then that can make some noise in this division. So that's my take on it. Cavaliers at four on Mike's uh, list. I'm going to kick it over to Luke. Um, you actually have... Georgia Tech ranked number four, um, just a step ahead of Mike, who had him at five. Uh, once again, uh, the Yellow Jackets, five and six in 2017. Why do you have them ranked just a notch? Uh, just one more thing I want to touch on Virginia right quick. They, uh, they, they, they are the ACC speaking time, in my opinion. They get the right, I don't know if they get the right coach, the right issue, whatever it is, but they could be, uh, I mean, just to uh, compare, they have the potential to be at least, you know, South Carolina good in the ACC. It's still a long way from that. So. They, they certainly are, like I said, a sleeping giant in social division there. And their, their, their time will come sooner or later. But as you said, on the Georgia Tech here, um, you know, they went 5-6. and six. Now, as you know, the, about, oh, what, 10, 12 years ago, you had the NCAA made to where, uh, you know, every team gets uh, 12 regular season games. Hawaii actually mm-hmm. 13 regular season games. Sorry, though. But uh, you get a 5-6. and six. Remember, they had a hurricane last year. So, yeah. you know, you're going to hear Miami, they went 10 2 last year. That does count their ACC championship game that they lost to Clemson. Does not count the bowl game to Wisconsin. They, they, uh, they lost a game, uh, I mean, so they, they lost a scheduled game to uh, Arkansas State last year. So, uh, but that's Georgia Tech there. Mike touched on the Tennessee game. If I'm not mistaken, Tennessee got the ball first in overtime, scored a touchdown, scored an extra point. If, if memory serves me correct, Georgia Tech scored a touchdown, went for two, and got stopped on the two. If I'm not mistaken, they lost that game by one point. Sell two point get that two point conversion and go six and five. They're in a bowl game right there. But uh, I, I've been saying for years that uh, yeah, ever since Paul Johnson's been at Georgia Tech anyway, the uh, I mean the the best time to get Georgia Tech is week one, full off season to prep for that triple loss. They are with, hands down the most difficult team in college football to prepare for. For if you if you only have six seven days to get ready for Georgia Tech, they are the hardest team to prep for offensively. Because, I mean, to the exception of the academy schools, Air Force, Navy, Army, etc., I mean, and no offense to the academy, they don't quite have the athlete that Georgia Tech does. So they're, they're just an absolute nightmare of a matchup right there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got them going. Uh, I, just, not to, I just think they're better than Duke, Virginia, and North Carolina as well. Georgia Tech, ranked number four on Luke's radar. Uh, we're going to jump to the three spot. This is also another interesting one because um, Luke has Duke ranked dead last in the ACC Coastal. However, you actually have them ranked in the top three at number three. Why do you have them ranked much higher? Well, in recent years, Duke, ever since they got that new coach, 
he's been putting Duke to succeed better and be more of a football school than what it was because the previous years before he got hired on, Duke was a laughing stock in football until he came. So he changed the culture, did some things here and there, and all of a sudden, Duke is starting to be a good football program. Now, they did have a winning record at one point, but they lost that uh, kickoff return touchdown against Miami. They was throwing back and forth at each other with no seconds left on the clock, and that was a heartbreaker. And Duke is always going to be competitive. Now, if their offense can score some more points and not have as many turnovers, they could be like an 8-5, and five, maybe a 9 or a 10 win team because they was there at some games last year, especially against Miami because uh, they had Miami uh, the close game for the first half until the second half came and the fourth quarter Miami blew them off the water. So the quarterback was a freshman last year coming to this year has to get better. If he can eliminate turnovers, and put some points on the board, and if the defense can play better and get more turnovers, Duke can do some damage in this division, and they might be able to play for the ACC championship game. I say about they're another two years out, but if they can get some players to play more offensively and score more points, then Duke has a shot at getting to the ACC championship game. So you think coming into this year, that experience, uh, coming from last year, you, you mentioned they had a freshman quarterback. You think that is one of the main differences for how they can be successful? Absolutely. Year? Absolutely. I think he can come to his own. I think he can have a big year in that offense. And don't be surprised if they can score a lot of points and win. They might be a 9 or 10 team this coming up year. Maybe a team to be on the lookout for uh, in college football, which will – can't wait to find out exactly how they finish in the ACC. Um, Luke, we're going to kick it to you in your third spot. You have the Pittsburgh Panthers. Uh, Mike had them ranked at number six. You have them in the top three. Um, why do you have this Pittsburgh Panthers team uh, ranked so high in their coaches? Uh, yeah, um, Pittsburgh just uh, a bit of an enigma, but the, the thing about Pittsburgh is, uh, you know, mine was their bowl game last year. They were mm-hmm. on cloud nine since, you know, Thanksgiving weekend. So, I mean, it's, uh, they, they haven't been become that kind of earth since then. Number one, number two, they were a young team last year. They, they were, a, remember, they beat Clemson at Clemson two years ago. That was a good, they, they lost a lot of players off that team. So they're, they're going to have a lot of underclass, they had a lot of underclass from last year, and it's a five to seven season. They uh they actually did, you know, I, I think they can go actually a uh, seven to five right there. Uh, one thing I want to touch on Duke, even though they got Duke at number seven, I can see a scenario where the three, four, five, six, and seven teams all finish either tied or within a game of each other. There's a lot of going on there. Uh, Duke had a resounding 41-17 win over Northwestern last year. They're trying to be a pretty good team. They actually brought it back in Edmonton this year. If Duke can win that game, you can see six, maybe seven teams from, from the Coastal being bowl eligible this year. I think from a competition, not from a talent standpoint, the first and seventh place thing is probably the most competitive division in college football into the SEC West with Bama, Auburn, Mississippi State, LSU, and the other you know, you got five, six teams. Those teams are a little bit better in the SEC, but as far as the actual talent gap, I think these are the next, you know, close to seven bunch of teams right there. So, uh, but no, Pittsburgh uh, got a cloud nine with the win over Miami last year. Um, Underclass are going to get their experience. Uh, they, uh, the kid's name is Connor. The Connor kid, he uh, set the touchdown record two years ago. Mm-hmm. They lost him. So, they, so their running game took a hit when they lost him. So I think they get the running game going again. Uh, well, one thing I do want to point out that Pittsburgh does finish the year against Miami again, this time at Miami. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to see what, uh, what the, what's the score for that game when it, if it, you know, when it does come around. But uh, no, uh, um, Pittsburgh, I'm, uh, I'm riding the Panthers as my uh, surprise third place team in the ACC Coastal. Now, I do want to ask you this similar question to what I asked Mike. Um, you think the, the experience coming in with Pittsburgh could also be a playoff to how the season finishes as well? Yes, absolutely. All right, so it looks like Pittsburgh and Duke, um, for all you college football fans of the ACC, these are two teams uh, to be on the lookout for. Uh, we're going to move to the two slot. Now, both of your picks are uh, similar, uh, starting with number two. Both of you have Virginia Tech. So, Mike, I'm going to actually ask, uh, ask you why you picked them at number two. Um, the Virginia Tech Hokies, they finished at 9-4 and four in 2017. Why do you have them ranked at number two? Virginia Tech got over to a hot, excellent start. Offense was scoring points. Defense was getting turnovers, scoring points. And they was clicking all at one. 
until they ran into Miami. They was with Miami in the first half. But in the second half, Miami is a different team. They are bipolar of shutting teams down defensively and scoring points offensively in the second half. And Virginia Tech ran into a brick wall in the second half against Miami. I mean, if they would just stuck what they did and made a little few adjustments, not too much, then they would have won that game. But Miami, all over offense, defense, special teams, it was way too talented for Virginia Tech, and that results in Virginia Tech's first loss of the season. Then on top of that, they lost against Clemson, but Clemson is a more better team than Miami. They are the Alabamas of the ACC in Clemson. So if Virginia Tech gets some players uh, coming, they got, excuse me, they got most of their players coming back, especially on defense, except for two players, the Edmund brothers who went to the NFL draft. So if they can replace those two, the linebacker and safety spot, and that uh, quarterback improves better, especially in the passing game, and not be a turnover prone, and you're going to have the running game, this Virginia Tech can actually win the conference and get to the 14 playoff. I have Virginia Tech. Um, same thing, Luke, you had them ranked number two. Um, why do you have them ranked for that? Unofficial first Monday night. The NFL Monday night football starts the following Monday, but that, that, that Labor Day night Monday, Virginia Tech at Florida State. Florida State wins that one. Virginia Tech, uh, they, uh, they, they have a non-conference game against Notre Dame to get them a black for October 6th. So, that, 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 I mean, it's, Notre Dame is supposed to be dependent, but that game can go all the way for, uh, as Mike mentioned, the college football playoff or whatever else. So, but, I mean, outside of the Notre Dame game, you know, between, they, they, they get Miami at home and Blackburn November 17th. I think all the models are going to be on that one right there. Um, but even though the game's at Blackburn, I uh, think, no, when the season gets to go, we start making a week-by-week week picks. Like, you know, I reserve the right to change my mind. Just, you know, right now, I'm taking Miami to win that game. Like, I just think Mark Richards going to have prepared. And uh, in, in addition to that, you know, Mike mentioned Clemson. That was a night game at Main Stadium as well. And they uh, they lost 31-10. to 10. Noted that only Clemson. I mean, Virginia Tech wasn't the, uh, they weren't the, champ the ACC championship a couple of years ago uh, against Deshaun Watson and company, and that gave them a heck of a run, actually. I think they lost 42 35 remember he says, the Tied two or three times in the second half as well. Very entertaining game. But uh, right now, I'm going with Mark Rich and company with the uh, Miami Hurricanes to uh, repeat as Coastal Division champions. Virginia Tech, um, both Mike and Luke, of course, have them ranked at number two, which takes us to the number one ranking in the ACC Coastal Conference, or the division, the, the Miami Hurricanes, a.k.a. the turnover chain game. We're going to swing this one to you. Really going to try, not really it was a surprise, um, obviously, but why do you have the Miami Hurricanes, who finished two, or excuse me, 10 and two back in 2017? Well, when the uh, head coach came back to his R Modern, who was fired from Georgia season one, he had him eight and five. In season two, he was one or two wins away from getting eligible to make it to the college football playoff. That defense was something special last year, especially the defensive coordinator, Manny Ramirez, who I am a big fan of. KU, you, you need to hire him as coach. Putting it out there, another day. But I am a big fan of his. He challenged his players on defense. From the previous season, he was like, this is the turnovers that we had, and this year we're going to have 25 or more turnovers. And he got the turnover chain started. And once the turnover chain started, all of a sudden everybody was on the bandwagon right. of the turnover chain. So this could remind me of Miami Hurricanes on, from the old from the 80s, the 90s, and early parts of 2000 when they had the number one defense in the nation and they was beating up number one offenses in the nation from back in the day because teams back in the day that played Miami, who was ahead, Miami just flat out shut them down and beat them off the wire. So if they could duplicate that 
then this team could be something special. The only thing I question about the Miami offensively is their quarterback. If their quarterback can find a way to not turn over the ball as much and get him to a reasonable uh, range for a touchdown or maybe a field goal per se, then they can be able to make some noise and kick the door down for the conference championship and possibly a college playoff berth as well. And the good thing about Miami is they get all the most, not, not all, but most of their players back because a couple of them went to the NFL draft and all that. So they get most of their players back. And if the quarterback can work on his mechanics a little bit and not turn on the ball as much, then you can see Miami win the games that they should have won. But that's my only question is the quarterback play. I mean, you can have a good defense and, and be consistent, but it's time for the quarterback to step up and take it to the next level and not rely so much on the defense and make more plays in crunch time. He has here and there, but this time I want to see more. Speaking of what you mentioned with the quarterback situation, do you think that if he does show that experience, we already know about the defense. Where do you see them playing out as far as on a nationwide scale? Where do you see this team potentially winning? Uh, I'd say for right now, they'll probably be a top 15, top 20 team, give or take. All right, Miami Hurricanes, uh, same thing, ranked number one uh, by Luke as well. 10-2 uh, and two once again in 2007. Well, they get Florida State at home uh, midseason. They get Florida State at home. They don't play Notre Dame in the non-conference. Them and Virginia Tech. Neither one plays Clemson. Neither one plays Louisville. Neither one plays North Carolina State. Yeah, Virginia Tech is definitely one of those low tier teams in that class. Both get the favor in that way. But uh, the thing about Miami is that, you know, it says 10 and 2 right here. They actually finished the other three game losing streak. They lost the ACC championship to Clemson. Then they lost the Orange Bowl, and obviously left in their home field to Wisconsin. They open up in Dallas this year against LSU. If they lose that game, that's suddenly a four game losing streak they have going on. And if Virginia Tech can now somehow swing that game in Tallahassee Monday at uh, Labor Day night and get a big time conference win to fight year 1 0 at Florida State. That changes everything. Even though the LSU game is in the conference game for Miami, that's still a four-game losing streak, though. It's not that LSU's chopped liver. That's going to probably be a three- or four-point you know, game. Or it's going to be best spread either way going into it. But uh, I think if Miami can uh, just – if they can beat a very good LSU team on a neutral field, stop the bleeds, they got, they got a fairly easy non-con after that. I mean, I think Florida State at home, no Clemson, no Louisville, no North Carolina State. Uh, they have to go through Virginia Tech there towards the end of the season. But uh, unfortunately for Miami, I think that their, their ceiling is going to be so so low. Their uh, their, their, their last two games against Clemson, they lost by a combined ninety six to three. Now, granted, that fifty eight nothing beat them without Golden, mm -hmm. but it doesn't change the fact that the last two times they played Clemson, they lost ninety six to three. And neither of them games were at Clemson. One was a home game when Al Golden got fired the next day. The other was, you know, the ACC championship, which in this case would be this year as well. So, I mean, they uh, stop the bleeding. Easy knock on after that. Florida State at home. They avoid the toughest team, same thing. I like Miami to uh, repeat as a uh, ACC Social Division champ. Which, but, but, by the way, last year was the first time they won the division since the Georgia Conference. Come on, man. Um, you mentioned um, the neutral game against LSU um, in Dallas. You know, I mean, definitely understand the importance of that, but um, like, what do you expect out of uh, the Hurricanes? Especially, if you're going to have high expectations going into, this game. and obviously with their outstanding defense. Um, what do you expect for them going into this first game, or not at LSU, but against LSU? I, I think I think Miami will win the game. I, I do. I, I mean, you got to understand this is one of year three of Mark Rick. So I mean, and he has very few of his upperclassmen there. He mainly still has, you know, he's going to have incoming juniors, and then for the most part, sophomores and freshmen. He still has zero seniors on that team that he recruited. So, and Mark Rick is a, he's a very well-established, well-respected coach in college football. Not quite on the Myers stage tree of, uh, you know, coach or whatever, Donald mm -hmm. Swinney for that matter, because he hasn't quite gotten that chip at Georgia or now Miami. But, I mean, 
I mean, no, no disrespect to what Mike was saying about some of the other teams, you know, making a move, you know, in contention, making a run at the end. As long as Mark Rich is at Miami, that, 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 that's their division to lose. All right. Uh, rank, uh, excuse me, one and two respectively. Virginia Tech, once again, they have ranked at number two. And the Miami Hurricanes uh, round out the ACC Coastal Division with a ranking of number one. Um, that's going to wrap up um, our ACC Coastal Division. We're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to break down the ACC Atlantic Division right here. Game ball. Back to game ball cards kicked off, of course, where the football season never ends. Now, in the second part, we're going to break down the Atlantic Division of the ACC Conference. We're going to swing things this time over to my man, Luke. Starting with number seven, both of you have the Syracuse Orange dead last in the Atlantic Division. Um, the Syracuse Orange finished with a record of four and eight back in 2017. Luke, why do you have them um, dead last in the division? It's a hard school to recruit to, despite being a public, uh, public university. Um, Hard to recruit to, kind of a remote location. Not a whole lot of football history. But, I mean, two things you need in college football, you know, is to compete. You need talent, you need depth. They don't have a lot of either. So, I mean, they, they, they were a young team last year. They got some guys that can play. They got a good coach, Dino Bavery, so I think he leads them in the right way there. But, uh, they, I mean, they just, uh, pound for pound, they just don't really man, man, measure up together to the division also. Well, Syracuse had their moments, and they're known for up, getting upset when it's facing at Clemson, but they need to revamp the whole thing. They need to revamp the offense, defense, and special teams. Could be the coaching as well. Uh, I could see their head coach on the hot seat, so if they don't produce this year, he's gone, so their record speaks for himself, and the reason why there's 4-8, and eight, and... That's pretty much all I can say about the Syracuse. I mean, I want to ask you both this. I mean, because granted, that's the conference that they're in. You have the North Carolinas, the Pittsburghs, the Dukes, the Virginias, Virginia Tech. Do you think that's also maybe part of the reason why it's kind of difficult to recruit to a Syracuse when you have all these other schools you might at least want to try to get yourself recruited to if you're not a big-time name? It's a certain degree, but at the same time, you got to put your players in the best position to win the game. If you don't put them in the best positions to win, then it's not going to work out. Syracuse Orange, Mike and Luke both have them number seven uh, in the division. Going down the line to number six, Mike, we're going to start with you on this one. You have the Florida State Seminoles at number six. They finished 2017 with a record of seven and six. Well, ever since that first game against Alabama, once they lost their quarterback, Francois, for the season, you just see the team uh, lost their edge and their breath was gone when the quarterback went down. And that played a big part of it, especially you have the offensive line shuffle here and there. And they started to tweak stuff up a little bit to win games and also – uh, losing Jimbo Fisher, the head coach of Texas A&M, was a big blow. So now you got the Oregon coach, Taggart, coming in there as the head coach of Florida State. You have new system offensive defensively. So how that plays out, I don't know. And Florida barely won their last game to get into a bowl game. So we'll have to see if they can do better this year. But for right now, I got a number six. All right, you have the Wake Forest Demon Deacons at number six on your list. Uh, Wake Forest finished with a record of eight and five back in 2017. Uh, why do you have them six? Uh, for a similar reason, I have Duke, you know, in the lower part of their division as well. It's a private institution. It's just, you know, they, they don't get much in the way of depth or talent there. Uh, for them to win eight games last year is just absolutely outstanding. Players, coaches alike, they just, I mean, 
So, so, so for me, it's a, it's a matter of how much longer can Wake Forest, you know, tend to uh, overachieve? And I, I don't. They're, they're probably better than the sixth place team in the Atlantic Division, but I don't. I don't know that I can pick them any higher than that. They seem like one of those teams that just are always, you know, seem, seem to get picked low and finish finish higher than what they pick. So I'm just kind of, you know, getting an early early starting script for them. Wake Forest. So you, I mean, so you said that you kind of feel like they overachieve. So it's it's one of those teams to where it's like they leave it out, they leave it on the field, and they and they kind of feel confident. Like one of those teams when they play against like major uh, programs like your Georgia Tech and your North Carolina. Do you think that also plays a role? Absolutely. You know they're they're uh, they're well over skilled. They're not very big, not very fast, not very deep. But they find a way to compete. They find a way. Even when they the one thing I've noticed about Wake Forest the last two, three, four years, even when they lose, it's not by much. It's not by much when they lose, so they uh they they they're, they're as far as the Atlantic Division goes, they probably compete better than any team in that division does. All right, Wake Forest on Luke's list is number six. We're gonna jump down to number five, and both you and Mike Luke have um, Boston College ranked number five. Mike, I'm gonna um, start with you first. Uh, Boston College finished with a record in 2017 of seven and six. Uh, excuse us, pardon, uh, pardon the voiceover uh, with everything going on. Uh, thanks to our friends at the Lawrence Public Library for giving us this slot. Um, bear with us for just a second. But um, we're going to jump once again into that number five slot. Seven and six in 2017. Both you guys have them ranked number five. Um, why do you, uh, for starters, have them ranked that six? Well, there was this against that should have won. And most of do is their offense. Their defense was very stout, in my opinion, I think. But offensively, if you can find a way to score more points and find a better quarterback, because they haven't had that good quarterback since Matt Ryan, a.k.a. Matty Rice, days of 2007, who led Boston College to a BCS game or a bowl. So, at least they did make a ball, but if they can find that quarterback like similar to Matt Ryan, I can see them win more games because they have the talent. The talent to it, their, their defense play excellent, but when it comes down to crunch time, they was on the field more than offensively. So, if offensively can score more points and find a quarterback that fits that system, then Boston College can make some noise in that division. Glenn, to you, uh, Sam. Uh, yeah, they just kind of slide right in. I think I just think they're better than the Bears. Even if they're kind of 50 50 with Wake Forest, the other teams I just think are better than them. I understand they beat the brakes off of Florida State last year. They go to Tallahassee this year. Florida State, I think we all know the more talented team. They'll be at home. They'll have an axe to grind. I don't think they beat the Seminoles again this year. Uh, and then the other teams, I just think are better than them. Both, once again, Mike and Lou have them ranked at number five. We're going to jump down to the number four spot. Um, Mike, you have. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons, you have them ranked fourth um, on your board. They finished with a record of eight and five back in 2017. Um, a few, excuse me, a couple of spots ahead from Luke, who had them ranked at number six. Why do you have them at fourth? Well, they uh, they play. They had an excellent season for eight and five. They was bull eligible, and they almost beat some teams that they shouldn't be. They was in there. Uh, for the most part of the games, and they lost. And Wake Forest has a talented team, but the question is, can they duplicate the same season of last year to this year? So it's going to be like a proof of year. Was it, uh, was it a flip or a flop, basically? So this is a prove yourself year. If they can make another ball run, this team has potential to make it in the ACC divisional, and they can surprise some people. So they get a lot of their players back, except for a couple of defensive players who went to the draft. So if Wake Forest can find a way to keep that going and replace those players that went to the draft on their positions, then they can make some noise in this division, possibly the conference, but we'll have to see. I also have to look at more to the schedule who they play. So if Wake Forest can duplicate, then the sky's the limit for them. Luke, uh, you have uh, North Carolina State uh, ranked number five on your list. Uh, the Wolfpack finished with a record of eight and four in 2017. Uh, why do you have them ranked four? No, I basically echo uh, what I said about Virginia earlier. Uh, they're they're kind of the unmentioned sleeping giant there. Uh, Again, if you get the 
right turn, KD, whatever else there. And then the thing with them is, though, they uh, they, they got the Florida State and Clemson who want to compete within the division there. Uh, I like to like North Carolina State, I like the Kansas State, and the Big 12, because you know, we are broadcasting the great state of Kansas. So uh, our K-State slash Big 12 fans, you know, you know, occasionally K-State, they'll, they'll get that occasional win over Oklahoma or compete with them. They'll get that occasional when Texas is you know, kind of on the run. They'll, they'll get the occasional win over the top five, top ten teams. Or NC State, they get that occasional win over Florida State. Occasionally, they'll be uh, or at least compete with Miami, at least compete with Virginia Tech. Remember two years ago, they're kicking a field goal at Clemson that would have won the game. They missed the kick. They lose in overtime. So, I mean, they're just that kind of – they're just that team. But at the same time, Lose to BC, they can lose to Pitt, they can lose to North Carolina. So they're, they're just kind of that, uh, that, that uh, they're just an enigma. But they, uh, they're certainly very talented. They are that sleeping giant. Um, if and when Dallas Woody, you know, ever needs money for, uh, you know, he either he's going to be a retirement or a better job or whatever else, I think North Carolina State could be that next, that next, that next division. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, we don't know how Willie Taggart's going to pan out Florida State. We don't know what's going on with Louisville and the other team's division there, you know, moving forward. So I think, you know, whatever that Clemson range is, I think North Carolina State has that potential to be that team to uh, basically take the torch from them. We just don't know when. Do you feel like uh, North Carolina State is they, – they, they just haven't lived up to the potential yet, yet the potential is actually there? Yeah, that's, I mean, as, as soon as they can figure out a way to win 10 games and back to back years – and they, they, once it clicks and they start getting this chance of never win season, look out, it's over. All right. Carolina State on loose board is ranked at number four. We're going to jump to the number three slot. Mike, you have Louisville uh, ranked number three um, on your list. Uh, they finished also similar to North Carolina State with a record of eight and four back in 2017. Um, why do you have Louisville at uh, three? Well, they got most of their players back offensively and defensively, except for about, I want to say about three or five, maybe more. Uh, Lamar Jackson, NFL draft. You have Azir, the cornerback, NFL draft, and so on and so on. But they get most of their players back on offense and defensively. So if they can find a way to finish games offensively with the new quarterback, then they can – compete for this, this uh, division and possibly dethrone Clemson because last couple of years, uh, that one game against Clemson at Louisville went, could went to overtime but lost on the last play. Then the one this year, they got blown off the water in the second half. So if the quarterback could come in and uh, not be as much a turnover prone, he is more a pure pocket passer than Lamar Jackson was. And de- defensively, they can make more stops. Watch out. Louisville could be a team to beat in that division, but we'll just have to see how far it goes. All right, Louisville Cardinal on my list ranked at number three. Um, you actually have uh, Florida State Loop uh, ranked at third on your radar. They finished with a record of 7-6 and six back in 2017. Um, you actually have them ranked three slots higher. Uh, Mike had them ranked at six on his board. Why do you have them ranked higher? State uh, for Luke, ranked number three, um, which takes us to the number two spot. 
Um, Lou, we're going to start with you first. Um, you actually have Louisville ranked uh, second. Um, once again, they were 8-4 and four in 2017. Why do you have them ranked um, second? I think you walk past them. Oh, I think Alabama wins that game. I think Alabama I think I mean I don't think it's gonna be like you know twenty four three or something like that. I think it's gonna you know I, I think two and second of both gonna have it going up for Alabama as well. So I mean I, I'm guessing it's gonna be you know forty you know forty one twenty four or forty one twenty eight something like that. But you know with that being said, this is you know rumored to be uh, you know one of one of Saban's uh, best defenses here, one of one of the best teams uh, of the Saban era there, which is really saying something because it is I mean, how many games did he get? But I, I, I think Jawal Pass is going to go out there, absolutely steal the show, give Bama uh, two, two and a half quarters of hell, and just, I mean, he, he's not the athlete that Lamar Jackson is. He doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to be that he's an Eastern quarterback or even a better quarterback. He was a better high school quarterback than Lamar Jackson was. Not as mobile, uh, reads his defense better, a little bit better on the throw. Knows how to put, he's very good about knowing when to put touch on the ball, when to force, not necessarily force deep, but you know, throw, you know, throw the, uh, to throw some of the darts for like a better term. So, but he, uh, he's got it right here. And I, I think he's, like I said, I think he's going to really steal that show week one against Alabama. Just the time is 855. All right, uh, we're going to jump to you, uh, Mike. You have the Wolfpack. Uh, Luke actually had them ranked at number four. Um, you actually have them ranked a couple slots higher with the second spot. Uh, why do you have the North Carolina State Wolfpack second on your list? Well, uh, even though they lost um, all their players on the defensive line, I feel like they can reload at that spot, and they're getting all their players offensively. If offensively they can score more points, then they could be in some games, possibly be in the conversation in the ACC uh, divisional rankings part, and they could possibly be throwing Clemson, but Clemson is there to stay. So if they can find a way uh, offensively to close out games and get more depth on the defensive line and the secondary plays well to their potential, watch out. And they do have their quarterback coming back who could be potentially the first pick overall. We'll have to see uh, the, what comes out of him. So if they can duplicate what they did last season, watch out. All right. And that's going to take us to our number one spot. And both teams, uh, both of you have not really a surprise here. Both of you have uh, the Clemson Tigers ranked first. Um, Luke, I want to start with you first. Um, the Clemson Tigers finished 12 and 2 back in 2017. Why do you have them ranked first? Uh, it's, 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 it's not a comment from our lines here. It's certainly an ACC thing. Well, uh, I mean, they kind of, you know, are there in the top three. The thing with Clemson, it's such a Clemson team. They're bringing the quarterback back. Uh, all four of the defensive linemen are uh, moving to the next level. Three of the four are going to be first round draft picks. And that's going to get Collins up and just absolutely it's going to be a murderer's row for a uh, coaching quarterback. They don't get any favors in the schedule, though. Week two, they're at Texas AM. We'll see what kind of, you know, we'll see what Jimbo Fisher has going on there. Um, the talent was never an issue. I start, home field was certainly never an issue. You know, Kyle Field, Kyle State was like one of the top three, five, maybe top seven venues in college football. Kind of the SEC version of Lane Stadium, if you will, for Virginia Tech. But uh, at the week two game, it's at, as you said, it's at A&M. Um, they, get, they have a bye week before they play at or excuse me, they North Carolina State at home. But that's the first of four consecutive games. North Carolina State, Florida State, Louisville. Fourth team, uh, I believe it's Boston College, they play back to back to back to back. Florida State, uh, they're, excuse me, they're at Florida State. They are, uh, they, they, they get Louisville at home, they get NC State at home. They're at Florida State, they're at NC, they're at Wake Forest. Now, Wake Forest is a part of that four game stretch, but they are at Wake Forest too, who Mike has assumed number four team is coming off an eight win season themselves. Uh, the annual clash against South Carolina at the end of the year. Um, they're they're going to be a, uh, no, 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 no favorites in the schedule, guys, that's for sure. Mike? Uh, I'm going to make it quick and simple before we wrap it up. Everybody's coming back offensively and defensively. And I think they're going to repeat the same thing. And Kelly Bryant's uh, quarterback second year uh, as a full-time starter. So if he can find a way to not have more turnovers this year as he did last year, and I know he can finish off the game. So they can do it. I can see a repeat as ACC Conference Division champs, conference champions, and make it back into the college playoff. And 
Vanderbilt is one of the best defensive coordinators in the game. He played all the players play with discipline, offensively, defensively. So they can repeat the same thing as that. And Clemson is my favorite to win at all again. I, Mike and Luke both have Tigers um, right now at number one. That's a good call on the turnovers. He, uh, I mean, turnovers gave uh, Alabama 14 points in that uh, playoff game last year. They lost 24 to 6. So they take the ball. It's still 10 to 6. Maybe they have a field goal or two, or maybe a touchdown in the drive, or whatever else. And Mike said on the first time he's covering the coach division that uh, Clemson's the uh, Alabama, the ACC. I disagree. Alabama's the Clemson of the SEC. I have yeah. mad respect for Clemson. Mad respect for them. All right, and that's going to wrap up the Atlantic Division of the ACC, as well, actually, the ACC Conference as a whole. Um, that's going to do it for this edition of Game Ball College Kickoff. Social media, Facebook, Game Ball College Kickoff slash Game Ball NFL End Zone. Email gck.gnfle. You can ask us any questions, send us a fan mail, whatever. Twitter, Game Ball Mike, all capitalized. And our Twitter page is gck underscore gnfle clothing line token designs topeka.com get your merchandise that's token designs topeka.com instagram gck underscore gnfle uh youtube subscribe to our channel gck.gnfle tv that's youtube your social media find me on instagram and twitter at jovel nt that's all one word Capital J on the Jovel and Capital E on the ENT. And also hit your boy on Facebook, Marcus Jovel ENT Jenkins. Okay, on Facebook, it's Luke Spartan. I am on Twitter too because I'm Luke And that's going to do it for this edition of Game Ball College Kickoff. Tune in next time. Thank you for tuning in. And we are out. Peace.